Okay, so I just want to do an overview of the One X console software that is built into uh, all One X players. Um, this was introduced a, a couple years ago at this point. I've seen a lot of updates and I just wanted to go over a few of the main features because I, I see a lot of people have uh, some questions and curiosity about the software that is built into the One um, X player devices. Now, I'm in the game right now just so we can see um how they've pretty much updated the control center app now as you can see my controller is obviously uh registered in the game because that's what you will, will like now originally when this software first came out i'll bring it up here you bring it up by pressing this turbo button on the top um or you can also bring it up by holding down the select button and pressing x so that's one another way that you can bring it up if you have it set like that you can do that so i can bring it up by pressing, holding down select and pressing X, and I can close it by pressing B. But the main way is to press this button up top. You press that, it brings up the uh, controller, uh, One X console software here. Now you can see I control this with the uh, joystick or the D-pad, so I am able to move around. I can adjust the TDP by moving it with the joystick or um, D-pad. I can also just take my finger and then just slide it to whatever like TDP I want it to be. So for example, if I want it to be 15 watts, I just slide it and then leave it there. Or if I want it to be 30 watts, I can slide it and leave it there. If I want it to be 23 watts, I can slide it. So you can pretty much put it anywhere from four all the way up to uh, 30 watts, as you can see there. And they have some indicated markers along the way. So it is good that it's no longer registered in game. So as you can see, I can move uh, in the actual one as console without having to uh, affect the in-game uh control input so that is good to see you have our tdp we also have our fan curve so we have two presets and we have an automatic fan curve so automatic is pretty much going to be a very good and decent out of the box fan curve or you can switch to one of the two presets here now in order to adjust the presets you can press the the y key that's going to bring up this uh this graph here and what you can do is you can pretty much put a, a point wherever you want it to be, and then it will put a point there on the graph. So this is pretty much my 100, uh, my 100 fan curve uh, setting, where pretty much as soon as I turn it on, it's going to go up to 100% and just stay there um, for the rest of the fan curve. You can of course delete that and then have it to be a nice linear curve, or you can put, um, put markers wherever you want them to be for a, a fan curve now that's a that's a really weird fan curve because it goes down as the heat goes up and then it goes back up you wouldn't want to have it at that but this just allows you to put these um markers wherever you want them and if you add one in between another one it will add uh, as you go along the uh, curve here so the degrees is on the bottom from 40 degrees celsius to 95 degrees celsius and then the percent of the actual fan from 25 percent to 100 percent is on the uh the y-axis there so that's great you do have two fan curves there so that is nice to see and you can reset it i'm gonna put this back to my 100 percent fan curve and i'll lock that there so you have control over the fan the next thing is something you may not adjust much but it is a vibration setting that's the vibration for the actual built-in controllers and you can adjust that from slight all the way up to fierce as they call it but that's just uh maximum uh vibration or you can put it down to no vibration if you don't want it to vibrate now when it sets that you will see this uh, orange light that's going to let you know that it was set you see the orange light there that lets you know that it was um that set now display we have our display resolutions we can change that on the fly so i'll put this to uh 800p and as you can see it did affect the overlay here because that overlay was set for uh, 1600p. So I can set that back here. I'll just set that resolution back to 1600p and then it's going to, of course, uh, set it back to 1600p. So that is good to have because you can change the resolution on the fly. You don't have to go into the settings. Now this one, this is a fun one. You can adjust the RGB on the, uh, the controllers here. So you have a bunch of different um, you know, presets or you can have it to be a color of your choosing out of all of these presets. And you can also adjust the, the brightness here. So that is, that is fun uh, to have that there. That's pretty nice. 
Now we also have the performance overlay. That is the, the overlay that you're seeing up top. That's going to pretty much be your, um, you know, your performance metrics and things like that. Now this, this menu, when you press Y to get into this menu, it is a lot of interesting stuff here. Now at the top, you see we have the, the global frame rate limit. That is going to limit the frame rate to whatever you select from 30 all the way up to 144, which is of course the, the refresh rate of the display. And we have a few in between, which is great. I have it set to unlimited because if it's set to unlimited, I usually just let the game you know, run as fast as it can. And I put on V-Sync just to avoid that. But you can select it to be any sort of uh, frame rate in between, and that is good. Now, if you select a frame rate in the limit, it allows you to have automatic TDP. And this is a unique feature um, that I do appreciate is here. You can set the automatic TDP. So for example, if you set the frame rate to be 60 FPS and then you turn on uh, automatic TDP, what it's gonna do is it's going to adjust your TDP in order to hit that frame rate. So if the game is uh, demanding, of course it's going to raise the TDP to meet that frame rate as best as possible. When the game becomes less demanding, it's going to lower the TDP accordingly just to um, keep the uh, TDP or keep the frame rate at the FPS target. So that is actually good to see. Now we have two types of overlay. The in-game overlay is one that's just going to show up in the game when the uh, RTSS um, recognizes a game is being played or the uh, system global display is like an, it's sort of like the, the RG Ally where it has a, an overlay that is movable. And this is going to be a persistent across the entire system. So even if I close the game, for example, I'll just close the game here. When I close this game, this overlay is always going to be here. So it, it doesn't matter if I'm in a game or not, the overlay will always be there. Um, some people like that. It depends on what game I'm playing. I may switch between them, just depending on how the game actually handles that. But you can always change it to the in-game only, and you have a few options. You can do horizontal or vertical. I'll show you the system overlay in the uh, vertical orientation. This is going to be like the box. So it is a box here, as you can see. So it's um, vertical, which means it's going from, you know, across or up. So it depends on which you set it. So horizontal is going to cross the screen and then vertical is going up like that. And you can also adjust the transparency levels. Five is the least transparent. One is the most transparent. You can you can barely see it. But that is the uh, overlay. Now, the turbo, I usually keep turbo off because CPU turbo, it's really um, not really necessary for um, most games. It, it sort of like takes power from the GPU. So I usually keep CPU turbo turned off, but you can uh, um, adjust the, the uh, CPU limit based on um, your needs and what type of games you play. You may need more CPU, you may need less. Now, this is one of my favorite features on the actual One X player or the One X console is that you can adjust the gyro. So if I enable the gyro, it's set to mouse mode. And what it's gonna do is it's going to, um, it's going to allow me to move the mouse using the actual gyroscope in the device. So right now it's set to left and right rotate and LT pressed, which means when I press the left trigger, so as you can see, I press the left trigger, it is going to actually move the um, the uh, the cursor here. That's great for games that have um, mouse and controller input. For example, uh, like a shooting game, I like to use that for a shooting game where I can use the left trigger to uh, move the mouse and I can still use the joystick, of course, but that gives you a much, um, you know, fine-tuned aim, and that gives you a much more precise aiming experience. You can also have it emula emulate an Xbox controller. In Xbox controller mode, it's going to pretty much uh, emulate an Xbox controller and then put the gyro on top of it, which means in games that don't have mouse and controller input like Call of Duty games, you can still use the gyro because it will be emulated an Xbox controller and then put in the gyro on top of it and then it will emulate the right stick, which means you'll be able to move and aim down sights. Now, the DS4 gamepad, that's a PS4 controller and that's good because when you set it to PS4 mode, you notice that it takes away all of the additional settings. That's because in PS4 mode, you have to adjust the settings in Steam. So Steam is going to see it as a PS4 controller and Steam will have the ability to map all of those controls as you would like. So you can do that in Steam and it will be um, per, at, a, at a per game basis. So that is good if you like that. Um, mouse mode is for games that have mouse and joystick input. Gamepad uh, Xbox is for games that don't have mouse 
and joystick input and then uh, PS4 or DS4, DualShock 4 is for using it in Steam. So that is nice to see. Now we also have sound vibration. I don't use the sound vibration feature. That's pretty much gonna take the, the sound output, like what will come from the speaker and it's going to add a vibration on that. Now that's good for like emulated games or games that don't have vibration natively. I keep that off because every game I play has vibration built in, so I don't really need that. Now, this is the most unique feature of any like sort of uh, software like this. It is a game trainer. And what a game trainer is, it is like uh, mods or cheats for your game uh, built into the, to the One X console. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but I'll open a game here and I'll show you that it pretty much is built in cheat codes or built in mods no i don't it doesn't have like online games of course because you shouldn't cheat in online games but a lot of offline games and single player games it does have um some mods and cheats built in so open um hades 2 and i'm surprised it actually has mods for hades 2 even though hades 2 is still in early access but you'll see in a second it does actually have mods uh for this game so when i go back here it's going to let me know that it sees hades 2 and then when I turn that on, it gives me all of these mods or cheats uh, for Hades 2. So you can see we have uh, like things like God mode, infinite health, infinite mana, adjust move speed. And then it does open this trainer in the background where you can close that and you can adjust it from the actual one as console. So I'm going to open Hades here and I'll show you um, those sort of uh, cheats in, in action. So I'll bring up the one as console and then I'll go to the trainer and I'll put on uh, God mode as well as um, infinite mana. And then you will see um, I have that here. So I'm gonna go into a level now and I have God mode on, so I shouldn't be able to die. So I'll just go over here into the middle of the field here. And as you can see, I have God mode on or um, that pretty much ignores hits. So now the enemies can't hit me. So I'm pretty much invincible at this point. I can, um, of course I can still attack. I can still interact with the enemies, but they can no longer interact with me. Now. I wouldn't suggest this for a game like uh, Hades 2 because most of the fun in this game is actually seeing how far you can go without dying. So not being able to die in this game is pre pretty much, you know, ruining the, the intended experience. But if you want to just grind out a level and see how far you can get and what upgrades come with it, then you could definitely do that. Now you can't, there's no online game. So don't be looking for online cheats. But for single player, you know, you may want to put on like, if you beat the game, you may want to put on like, a cheat code just to see what it's like to get to the highest level possible but you know everyone has a different idea of you know if cheats should be used or not some gamers don't like cheats at all but it is built in and it does have a number of games uh built in and it's like pretty much it's free of charge you don't have to really pay for any mods or anything like that that's just something for you to keep in mind it's not the biggest feature i don't know i don't know a lot of people that will use that but somebody may find that to be a novel feature now of course we have brightness slider and a volume slider of course we have that and also we have the um the console mode or the the launcher mode so it has a launcher built in as you can see it puts all my games here now the nice thing about this is that it did this automatically i downloaded games and then it pretty much put them all in here it has the art i didn't download any of this art or information it did this all automatically it scanned my ssd and put all of these um these games here so i think that is is that's nice because it has all of these games here and in this sort of um launcher or game mode you have a few options you have the library of course then you have the program controller what this allows you to do is um adjust the back buttons on the back so you can adjust these back buttons here and you can adjust all of your normal keys so you can have your a button to be whatever you want and the second mode is great because you can use one of the back buttons as like a uh, a macro switch which means if you hold that back button and press one of the buttons you can get it it's like you have multiple layers of control because you can have the regular press and then you can have the second mode for example i have the second mode to be um screenshot for mines so if i hold the back button and then um press the um the d-pad up that's going to be a, a screenshot so you know you have two layers of control which is great then you can um, map your shoulder buttons. You can adjust the, the dead zone here. And you can also map the, the joysticks and then adjust the dead zones here. And you also have macros. You can record macros and then add that macro to one of your buttons. So I just um, start recording a macro here. So as you can see, it's taking my inputs and then it is um, 
mapping those as a macro and then I can save that. And here is my macro. It tells me what it is and it tells me all of the keys that will be activated when I initiate that macro. So this, I mean, the One S console is a pretty fully featured software. Everything that you want to do, it is there. The only thing that I'll say is missing is like uh, per game, uh, like per game settings or profiles to the TDP. But it's not the biggest deal because if you use automatic TDP, then you technically don't need uh, per game profiles because it will handle the TDP for you automatically. But some people would like to have that control over the TDP. So that is nice to have. And that's the only thing that's really missing. It's like uh, per game profiles for the actual TDP range. You do have profiles for um, your controls. So you can make presets and then save these, um, but you can't like map that to a specific game uh, as of yet. That's really the only thing that's missing. I wish you could, uh, for example, uh, have a per game preset where you can set it like on Armory Crate, where you can set the controls you want for each game. So every time you launch that game, it pretty much remembers it. But this is like, I guess, I guess the second best thing. You can make your profiles and then you can switch to them easily. And it's not much of a hassle once you make them, but that is definitely something uh, to consider is that it's not going to go through your profiles and you can't assign a profile to a specific game. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much an overview of One S console. I can show you on the um, the One X Fly, which is a much smaller device, as you can see here, but it has the same, the, all the same features of the um, One S console are the same across all of the devices. And it's just like a button pressed down here. So this is how you bring it up. That's how you take it down. I think it is much more reachable with the button on the bottom, but yeah, that's just me. Oh, one thing I didn't show you is the keyboard. And this is dope. This is like the best keyboard on a Windows handout. Not only does it like bring up this keyboard that is a uh, touch screen and is movable with the joystick, you can control this keyboard with the actual uh, controller input. So you can use the joystick to move around. You can use the triggers for like shift and the joystick is caps lock. The other trigger, right trigger is enter. And then you have like shift backspace and then Y is um, space. So you can interact with this uh, uh, keyboard in any situation no matter where you are in the system, you can bring up this keyboard and then you can take it away at any time. I think that's that's amazing because if you're in a game and you need to input like a name or something, you can use this keyboard and never have to like leave the game or connect the keyboard. So I think that's a dope feature. But anyway, this is pretty much the entire One X console overview. I think it is an amazing piece of software. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's not the best looking. I will say it's kind of, I don't want to say like it's, childish or not professional because it's a gaming device i don't expect it to be professional but it, it it has like a less than like premium quality design to it now i can't really fault them too much you know because it's a small team and they, they were able to do a lot i will say it doesn't look as quote unquote professional as something like armory crate but it is great has all the features that you would like i would say it's it's second to armory crate now i do have the um uh, a Neo devices that have Aerospace 2, but I actually like this better than Aerospace. I know, believe it or not, I actually like One S console better than Aerospace because every time Aerospace has an update, it pretty much kills the profiles that you make. And it's, I don't know, I, I like this better than Aerospace. Even though Aerospace does look a little bit more professional, I do like uh, One S console for the features that it has. Aerospace has let me down more than one as console has one as console never really lets me down so i do uh prefer i do prefer it over something like airspace it is behind armory creep i will say that rg ally x and the rg ally still have the best software for any windows device but one as console is right up there with the best of them and i do appreciate it i do love it even though it doesn't look as polished i guess you would say it's still great but anyway yeah that's one as console uh long-winded video just showing you you know the features and, and how it works but anyway yeah that's it peace